In this video, we're going to take a look at for loops. Now, for loops are very useful when you want to repeat your code a set number of times. For example, if you want to repeat your analysis over every frame of a movie, you should be using a for loop. Now, the basic syntax of a for loop looks like this. The for loop starts with the keyword for. The next component is the name of the index variable, then an equal sign, and then a vector that specifies the values of the index variable. Now we'll discuss a little bit more about what the index variable is, but just be aware that the index variable will be created when this for loop runs. And finally, the for loop terminates with the end keyword. Now let's switch over to MATLAB and take a look at a simple example. I'm going to create a new script. I'm going to create a for loop that says for idx equals open square bracket, one, two, three, four, close square bracket. Now, as I mentioned earlier, idx is the index variable. Now, the first time the loop runs, this index variable will have a value that's equal to the first element of this matrix. So for example, here, the first time the loop runs, idx will have a value of one. The second time the loop runs, idx will have a value of two. The third time the loop runs, idx will have a value of three. And then the fourth time the loop runs, idx has a value of four. So based on this rule, you can see that in MATLAB, for loops will run for as many times as there are elements in this index vector. All right, let me modify this example and we can test this out. So I'm going to add in a line between the for and end statements that says DISP index. So this um, function DISP here is just short for display. And what it does is it displays the value of the variable IDX each time the loop runs. Now let me run this code. And you can see that in the output in the command window, it is printed out one, two, three, four. And that corresponds to the four times this loop will run. Now I'd just like to point out here that this index values do not have to be consecutive. They could be anything. So for example, if I change this to IDX equals 10, five, two, and nine, this would be, um, this, will, this will work just fine. And obviously one of the advantages of having this index uh, variable here is that you can do operations on it. So for example, if I could wanted to do multiply um, the index variable by two, I could also do it that way. In this case, we'll get 20, 10, four, and 18 for each of the four times the for loop runs. Now, finally, you will typically be running the for loop a set number of times based on the number of elements of some variable. So let's say, for example, that we want to add the, uh, the number two to each element of the matrix A. Um, so let's say A is equal to 20, 43, 3, 2, and 5. And we want to just add 2 to every element of this vector here. Now, this is obviously a bad example because if we wanted to do that, we could just use arithmetic statements and just go A plus 2. But let's just try doing this in a for loop. Now, we know that what we want to do is to basically iterate over every element in A. So in this case here, our index variable should be um, a matrix that has the same number, uh, the same length as the number of elements in A. And it should be um, increasing. And so it turns out that the um, best way to do something like that, if you remember a while ago, we looked at um, how to create a vector with increasing elements by using the colon operator. So if I typed in the command window, if I went one colon five, it creates a vector that starts from one and goes to two, three, four, and five. So we would be using a colon operator here to make life a bit easier for us. Um, now, if we wanted to get the number of elements in A, we could also use the function numl. So let me just run this line of code to declare the variable A. You can see if I type in numl A, we get a value of five, which is the number of elements for A. So putting these two things together, we could use um, for our index variable, we could create a matrix that looks like one colon numl A. And in this case here, like I said, we want to add a value of two to each element of A. So again, here we would use some indexing um, so we could go a uh, parentheses index, right? So this means that, um, like I said, the index value here would change. Um, and so the first time the loop runs, idx will have a value of one. 
So it indexes the first element of a. The second time the loop runs, idx will have a value of 2, and it will index the second element of a, and so on and so forth. Um, and then we can go plus 2, add 2 to every element um, in that matrix a. So if I run this code, you can see that what this code is doing is basically looping through every element in the matrix a um, and then adding 2 to it. Now finally, instead of just displaying um, the output here, let's say uh, we wanted to actually modify the values of a to have these new values. We could just go I, a uh, parenthesis index equals a index plus 2 and then semicolon. So if I run this function now, you will see that now the variable a has been changed um, to these new values.